Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Community Critics, a pop culture podcast. We're not only committed to our opinions, but also each other. Aww. Aww. I'm Kevin Lau. I'm Ryan Davis. And I'm Zach Wright. How are you guys doing today? Other than it's... being feeling a little delirious. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. You got your boost. You boosted. How are you feeling? I got, you got, I got my booster. booster yesterday morning. The worst of it's over already. That was like last. The worst of it was last night. Now it's on the upswing. Your um, tweet killed me last night. I was reading it. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Oh yeah, I, I'm surprised how well that tweet did." <laughs> Speaking of how well social media stuff's doing, I love how Jordan's TikToks on our TikTok page are the ones that are getting the most views. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we should do a study on why. Why? <laughs> Jordan, get ready. We're gonna start doing thirst traps. Oh no! <laughs> she gave me a grin. <laughs> sure, I, like, I know what I have to do. <laughs> she is strong enough to do it. Yes. Uh, but uh, it's kind of like reeling back a little bit. So today we're going to be talking about the Matrix because if you remember from last episode, I challenged you guys to watch the Matrix. Mostly because Zach hasn't seen it yet, and yep. he suggested, "Hey, I actually do want to watch the Matrix." I'm like, "Cool, we'll put that part of the show." Um, <laughs> We'll make so, content out yeah. of it. Make make content <laughs> of it. Mo- monetize all our all our thoughts on movies and whatever. I'm sorry, I'm still very delirious. <laughs> it's okay. You're doing uh, great. If you need help, let us know. <laughs> I don't even know if I need, if I want help. <laughs> Say oh, the no, word no. coconut three times, then we'll so we'll call nine one one. Anyways, so the Matrix is a film from 1999. Uh, directed, written and directed by the Wachowskis. This is their second film, I believe. Their first film was Bound, uh, which was like a couple years before that. Mm-hmm. Uh, which also Bound, if you haven't seen it, really good. Uh, it is their, it is their most normal movie that they've made, but it's very good. Uh, the Matrix was like the first, like every movie that they make, it's a little weirder and weirder. So Matrix was the first step away from like the normal movie yeah. formula. Uh, and like you know as everyone knows the matrix movies gets weirder and weirder and then like you know they also made cloud jupiter or cloud, cloud atlas jupiter ascending hang on one second can, can i kick off real yeah. fast yeah ryan i'm gonna ask you a question yes what other movie did the wachowskis make that you love do you you know this yeah. one, ryan you know this ryan <laughs> do i i yes. just said it i, I cut you off before I, you said it hmm yeah, I was like, I was, re- I did not hear what you he said. It's oh, Speed no. Racer. <laughs> oh god, yes, I do love the Speed Racer movie. It's the same people that made Speed Racer. Yep. Um, but yeah, The Matrix is a film that uh, I personally think feels like was ahead, of, was like way ahead of its time. That only recently that we were starting getting getting films that do the that take on the same concepts of The Matrix. Yeah, but they still don't do it as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, whereas with the matrix, essentially it's like VR turned evil. <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, your people, people are stuck inside this computer program thinking it's reality, mm-hmm. but in the real world, uh, r- machines are using them as human, as batteries to power themselves. Uh, later on we get like, we get Tron legacy, which is inspired from by the matrix. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we also get Jumanji sequels inspired by the matrix and as well as ready player one, which is the matrix, but bad. <laughs> um <laughs> hey whoa what the yeah hell? Hey, I want, don't get me started okay. on ready player one man i want to call <laughs> attention got... to something kevin i don't yeah. want to say it's vr because that gives vr too much credit can we just say the internet <laughs> <laughs> is it like uh, i mean like, like vr is isn't there VR. yet for us vr isn't there yet for us okay we have not like approached vr to this uh, to this point we yet. will we could oh, we'll no. get there at some point we have if it's like it's combining vr and augmented reality essentially yeah um, yeah so like this is but this is like way into the future of VR. So like in Ready Player One is that they do VR, but like, you know, they have suits where they can feel like what's happening inside the game and all that stuff. Right. But it's it's technically VR. You just plug yourself into it. Um, <laughs> well, they they didn't have a choice of very much in plugging themselves. in. That's true. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Got a point. Oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, before I ramble on too much, we can go off. And list our initial thoughts and review scores. Zach, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, sure. Hang on, my hands caught. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, I gave it a four out of five. Um, I found the Blast middle act to be just a little bit slow, but the Matrix mm-hmm. as a whole is really good. 
uh, it definitely took a concept that was new, like you said, Kevin, like in the mm-hmm. 1999, and it really created a really great think piece out of it while also being entertaining and having me captured. The action mm-hmm. choreography effects and performances are super well done. And I really liked how each like nugget of an idea or like theme is like it's set up and it's paid off very fulfillingly. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't say the theme. I'll come back to that after we dive into spoilers. I guess we're already in spoilers. Technically, this is like a 20 year old movie. Um, <laughs> but, like, if you haven't theme, seen The Matrix, just go right. watch it. I guess spoiler warning at this point. Um, yeah. There was one line that the Oracle tells Neo that's like, um, you'll know you're the one. It's just like falling in love. You, you just know. And like mm-hmm. that's paid off later when like Trinity and confesses her love to Neo and Neo figures out he's the one. Like mm-hmm. it's such a super cathartic like payoff and like set up and payoff and just works so well. And so, yeah, four out of five. Super well done. Great themes. Nice. Good movie. What about you, Ryan? Well, I was going to say this was a very animation at the end, but I forgot about the whole Trinity thing. So, yes, it is straight up an anime at the end. Bro, this is a love story. Just <laughs> power of friendship or power of love, mm-hmm. whichever one you want to use. Save the Matrix the day is at just, the end. The Matrix is just a high tech love story. Well, I, I mean, this is, that's literally what Resurrections is. It's oh, shit. Resurrections I, that is literally a romance. It's awesome. Oh. So I, I literally said that this is just live action sword art online, which is basically, <laughs> which is, which is inspired by the matrix. <laughs> I know <laughs> where people get stuck in a video game and they die in the video game. And I'm you like, die all in right. the game, you die for real. And I'm like, yeah, this is just, and it has a chosen one and everything. I'm like, this is live action sword art online. There's even a romance. I love yeah, my this, my, this is the matrix. The Wachowskis were like very inspired by anime and uh, mm-hmm. a lot of like Hong Kong filmmaking as well when they were making this movie. Yeah. Um, so there's a it's lot. The like, I can go into more detail later on of like all the stuff that's that they brought into American cinema that was not in, in it at all before. Right. Um, which we can go into it after the break. Well, there's so many different takes on like this, like, this mm-hmm. idea of the Matrix. Like, like we're all joking, like sort of online. Like mm-hmm. I said, Spy Kids 3, like everything has its own riff of The Matrix, for example. And right. like mm-hmm. The Matrix was the first that did it. And like that's the credit it deserves. But yeah, right, right. back yeah. to what you're like th- the only your The are. only other piece of media that kind of did it before The Matrix was Tron. But that, that was right. handled very differently. Like Tron. Right. Yeah. Like The Matrix is Tron, but taken in a completely different direction. Ryan, continue your thoughts, please. I still need to watch the original Tron. But yes, uh, continuing my thoughts. Uh, my first time watching it, which was back in 2017-ish. Roughly, with yeah. With Kevin. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'll admit it took me a minute to get interested because I was very much like, yo, I thought this was just a computer program. Why is he going yeah. to like a club and doing an office job? But mm-hmm. then I was like, oh, okay, I, I'm interested again. But like, I was really waiting for the whole bullet dodge <laughs> move because that's all <laughs> I'd heard about the Matrix and when I was a kid. It was like, mm-hmm. yeah, people dodge bullets and they do this little back flip thing. <laughs> I don't know. He does a limbo. <laughs> my only limbo. context... Yeah. My only context for the Matrix was in the Jimmy, or not Jimmy, um, Timmy Turner, or really Odd Parents, the Wishology series, where like it's oh. based on different <laughs> things. So I know yeah, like, like a CGI segment. Yeah, I know like Crocker was like Mister or Agent Smith, and like Timmy was yeah. Neo, obviously. And I was like, when does like oh when does he do the bullet? <laughs> so I was like like Ryan, I was waiting for every time they got into a fight scene for him to do a bullet mm. dodge. Yep, and I was like, all right, and I also for some reason thought like Lawrence Fishburne was like the the one. Because yeah. I was just like, yo, this dude has the red pill and the blue pill, so he must be, like, the, the most powerful person. Nope. Mm-hmm. I was very confused. As a, as no, he, just, watches, he but... just frees people from the Matrix. Um, yeah. There's no... I I haven't gone deep into the lore to really figure out, like, what the pills actually do, or if mm-hmm. it's just symbolism. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. So... Uh, so yeah, so I don't know if the pills are actually like you. Uh, you have the pills because you have power or something like. Because the pills only exist within the matrix; they're not in right. the real world at all. So I have no. My question is, idea. Uh, my question is, how many people started popping pills after watching the Matrix? Oh my god! <laughs> there's a there's a there's a there was a tweet I saw where it's like Morpheus was handing out <laughs> handing out pills at a party, but it's like no, no, he comes back from handing. He, yeah, he's about to offer pills to Neo. And he's like, Neo's just like, oh, this is like Molly or something like that. It's like, wait a second. Then that means, and then like it cuts to like a bunch of ki- teens uh, waking up in the pods. <laughs> oh my God. I love that. <laughs> I do love that opening. Like after he takes the pill and he wakes up in the pod for the first time. Like mm-hmm. that like contrast. Dude. And like, 
Yeah, that's so like, good. Such a good reveal. When I when I first so I first watched this movie when I was sixteen. Mm -hmm. uh, so like, and I didn't really know anything about it beforehand. But uh, dude, like, yeah, it's just like the way it just reveals like new things to you. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. Yeah. Um, and, and it's like this, like the sudden change when he like yeah, like we were saying when Neo wakes up in the pod, you see like the whole world is just controlled by machines. Yeah. Like that's like scary. <laughs> Oh yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, going into like my initial thoughts and review scores, five out of five. <laughs> my, I mean, come on, this is my this is my all time favorite movie, so I'm gonna be a little biased here. But I believe that this is this film is like an example of how art is subjective. Mm -hmm. uh, every time you watch it, you can find something new to learn about its themes, while it's still clear that the film what the film means to its creators. It's not like there, there there's some creators you meet where just like oh, I purposely left it open ended for the audience to make mm -hmm. their own. Uh, assumptions on it whereas like that's not how you do it, it has, still has to mean something to the creators yeah um which i'll dive more into what this means to the wachowskis uh later on but like you know this film has just has layers upon layers which is very rare for a big budget film of this mm -hmm. kind um let alone an, uh, an action film like there's like how often do you see an action film that actually has philosophies about reality and um oh yeah in the morality of ignorance uh within it uh but yeah it's like and then like part of what that shows that this is art is subjective here is because not everyone who views the movie will see the theme or read it the same way everyone's going to read it a little bit differently like you uh like the like a, a big reading that i've seen of this film is like how it is basically the story of jesus because you know you got the you got cypher being basically being judas and, and um mm -hmm. and um uh turning his basically Ruining his life? I forgot the word. Betraying him. <laughs> Betraying him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, yeah. There's the de there's yeah, the delirium there's coming the out word. of Kevin. Yeah, I know, right? Um, <laughs> it's okay, Kevin. We understand. <laughs> there's a lot of Jesus out like allegory, like Lily Neo being the chosen one, Judas, the, like the name Neo Trinity dying, <laughs> Trinity, like Neo dying. Spoilers coming back to life. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, a lot. Yeah. Of also, for for some reason, I'm like I'm just looking at because it, it made me re remember because you said Neo dying. For some reason, when they were like killing all the uh, his crew or whatever, mm -hmm. I don't know why I always thought Cipher was Bill Burr. I don't know why. He looks like Bill Burr. It's Joe Panta Pantagino. Like, oh yeah, no, yeah, one hundred percent looks like Bill Burr. Yeah, yeah. And so like the entire time I'm watching, I'm like, is that Bill Burr? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't think he was in Matrix. He would have mentioned if he was a Matrix. I'm trying to remember what he was actually in that I remember him from. I know he was in Percy Jackson. He was Gabe. Oh, he was Gabe in Percy Jackson. That's what I know him from. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's in that and he's in the, in the Bad Boys movies. He's in Captain, Bad Boys, and yeah. And I was just like, wow. who the hell are you? He's in The Sopranos, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. It, it, was just, it was just throwing me off the entire time I was watching the movie because I was like, that's not Bill Burr, right? Imagine no, no. being the bad guy in the Matrix and also being Gabe in Percy Jackson. Honestly, <laughs> Gabe's worse. <laughs> Gabe's worse. Yeah. Honestly. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan, what'd you weigh out of five? Did you tell say our score? Your score? Uh, four out of five. I give it the same as you, Zach. It's not awesome. perfect for me, but it's still good. Perfection. I do think this is a film where you might enjoy it more if you watch it a second time maybe not like not like right away but like eventually mm -hmm. um i didn't there's, enjoy there's it more a the second time it. yeah there was a lot uh, to go through like there's a lot to take in and like like mm -hmm. you said it is art like every time you watch it you find something new that comes about with its themes mm -hmm. um like for me like when the movie was over i kind of just like clap clap dust my hands like all right that was a good film let's move on like mm -hmm. i didn't really give it a lot of thought and the more i think about yeah. it I'm like wow there's a lot of stuff in here actually the more you yeah. engage with it while watching it, the more you mm -hmm. notice how dense it is. Um, yeah. Because like, yeah, because because you because one way to watch it is just you know passive entertainment, and it's just like, oh, it's an action, it's a really cool action movie, and you mm -hmm. don't think much about it afterwards. But then like you know, like I said, like the more you engage with it, the more you find out what's going on. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, on that note, we're gonna take a quick break, and when we talk when we come back, we'll talk about how well does it hold up, and what we found surprising about it. Starting a podcast? Try a Podbean Unlimited hosting plan. 
It's what we use here at Committed Critics, giving us the opportunity to have our show on Pandora, iHeartRadio, and even Spotify. You can get your first month of unlimited hosting for free on us by going to podbean.com slash committed crits, just like our Twitter, or by clicking the link in the description. Podbean, the easiest, most affordable option to get started in podcasting. Don't you wish there was a pop culture review site that appealed to cinephiles, both professional and casual? Well, look no further than crprights.com. New content such as movie and TV reviews, film essays, and more are released every week by writers who crave for movies like every moviegoer craves for popcorn. CRP Writes is dedicated to making sure no one is wasting time or money where they shouldn't be. After all, you have to be able to buy your popcorn and eat it too. CRPWrites.com, casual reviews with purpose since 2018. And welcome back to Committed Critics as we continue to talk about The Matrix. How does it hold up? What did you find surprising about it? Uh, Zach, you want to kick us off? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, I'd say it holds up visually a lot better than some other movies back from that age. Um, mm-hmm. f- I'm going to crap on Ghostbusters, even though, like you said earlier, Kevin, before we started, <laughs> it's like a 16-year-old older movie than The Matrix. Yeah, it's like those are you don't yeah. compare the two. <laughs> yeah, I will say it's better than Tron, obviously. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. That's that's up for debate. Better I don't know yeah, too Tron much for the yes. Tron. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh well, yeah, because Tron Legacy is what in two thousand nine. So Roughly, ten years yeah. later, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, again, you can't really compare those movies like that. I was just kind of kidding because I wrote that in the doc last night. <laughs> it's not. Uh, it's not as good as Gremlins. <laughs> Gremlins, Jesus Christ! This movie e. is as old as me, and it utilizes like a uh, like effects, frames per second, and CG mm-hmm. in a way I haven't seen it done as good in today's standards um Mm -hmm. like i'll be real like the effects in this movie are better than some of the prequels sorry ryan um this actually came out the same year as phantom menace i did yeah yeah, i did so that is not the comparison what the hell uh listen the episode one puppet yoda always freaks me out anyway Um, (laughs) well now he's a cpi yoda oh but he didn't freak you out in the in the originals yeah because the original one looked good the chosen one arc feels a little old, but obviously it's not the movie's fault being from 1990 because like we've right. had so many chosen one arcs. But it's like we can't fault the movie there on that. I'm just tired of the storyline personally. Um, super surprised with how, like I said earlier, like, okay, all right, that was good. And I moved on. Didn't really like think about it too much. I wasn't like blown mm-hmm. away, but like the more I think about it, the more I'm like, oh yes, it is very like art housey. Yeah. It is very, very good. Um, I, I, will, I will say that the chosen one story this this movie is more of the setup and then the rest of the, the rest of the series explores it much more in depth and kind of de- mm-hmm. deconstructs the trope yeah for sure it's really good cool cool i cool. i can't talk about chosen one tropes because i that's your favorite trope that's my favorite yeah <laughs> <laughs> so ryan what do you think of it i mean okay i have to compare it with my first time watching it and watching it again the other mm-hmm. day so mm-hmm. first time watching it I was very much kind of like, like I said, I was trying to, I was waiting for like the action to build up. I was very surprised when the whole world turned out, like when I, I knew the world was supposed to be a simulation, I was not expecting, you know, pods of people <laughs> and like yeah. him to rip out a thing in his neck. And I was like, oh, this is every went from time like, some kind of metal device goes in there, human, I'm visibly uncomfortable. Sorry, continue. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I was, I was very much like, just like, I was expecting. You know, oh, it's, it's just a simulation or whatever. They're like, I don't know, like maybe if, again, sort of online VR headsets or something. Oh, I was yeah. not expecting. Yeah, well, our bodies are being harvested. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, this took a very dark turn. But yeah, I did enjoy it. I will say the special effects were fun. I, I, I won't say I'm not going to compare them to Star Wars uh, just for the own, my own sake. Oh yeah, no, I take uh, I had to take the cheap shot at you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I was like, I do like their costume design, but that's also because I'm a big fan of just black leather trench coats. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, they looked cool. <laughs> they had a lot of guns. I mean, this this was the Ryan, film that started it. So yeah, Ryan loves black leather. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even wear black or leather, but I was like, oh man, this looks cool. That's I like, like the shot yeah. where they look like they're from the cover art of a grunge band or something yeah yeah my favorite my favorite uh parts of the movie were definitely the training scenes just learning how they could use the matrix 
Mm-hmm. Um, because that was like kind of the that was kind of what I wanted to see in this movie, like kind of just manipulating the Matrix to your own like devices or whatever. And yeah. it very much did remind me of a anime training arc scene. But yeah, I like, do I, love how I, it was. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, continue. I don't know, keep keep going. No, I, oh, no, I was gonna say I did love that, like how easy it was for him to like learn kung fu. Just plug it in. I'm like that's <laughs> such a cool thing. <laughs> oh yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> really cool concept. I know kung fu. Hey, if I just get a flash sure. drive, you learn how learn how to do kung fu. Right. I also liked how they took uh, like. So, I mean, Morpheus, like, they're like, oh, he's the cool badass. Like, no one can beat him, right? And you have Agent mm-hmm. Smith just literally beat the snot out of him. And then it's like, <laughs> oh, dear that- God, they're so screwed. And then, like, Neo comes around and beats Agent Smith. It's like, oh, Neo is the one. Like, it's super, such a simple, easy thing to do. And by today's standards, it'd be such, like, uh, people, like, point and make fun of me. Like, oh, how could he do that? <laughs> Neo's a hacker. Um, yeah. Don't worry about right. it. Right. Like, I really wasn't expecting that. I really was not expecting Morpheus to get owned like that. Right. <laughs> the Matrix um, needs to install anti-cheat. <laughs> uh sorry right i mean to cut you off continue your thoughts my bad no that, i mean that's pretty much it. i enjoyed the subtle uh, sometimes i go back and watch a few scenes from the different different parts of the movie yeah. like not just the whole movie itself but i'll go back mm-hmm. and like watch like the whole uh agent smith interrogating morpheus because i'm like that mm-hmm. scene was like it's interesting to see like you know mm-hmm. this program t- technically have a will of its own yeah yeah so the, the I, romance it, between Morpheus and Neo. Oh god. Oh. <laughs> Hot. <laughs> uh yeah, so as far as like how I think it holds up, I think it holds up very well, although like some of the camera movements and dialogue and staging can be seen as cheesy today. Uh you know, but uh however I do think the film well not only I think it, I know like the film introduces a lot of techniques that were new to American films at the time. Such yeah. as the gravity defying kung fu with like wires as during mm-hmm. the fight, um, mm-hmm. incorporating slow motion with the action. Whereas, like, because before the Matrix, action was u- um sorry, slow motion was usually used towards like the end of the fight. It's like the final punch or like the mm-hmm. final explosion or whatever. Uh, whereas yeah. the Matrix was using Hong Kong um, uh, cinema styles where they they incorporate uh, slow motion throughout the whole fight. Cool. Um, Ryan, you kind of saw it with Police Story. Uh, there's a lot of sh- shots in the middle of e- each fight where that are, uh, there are slow motion instead yeah. of just at the very end. Um, and of course, uh, the the creation of bullet time, where everything in frame is ha- happening in slow motion, but the camera moves at a normal or even faster pace than uh, than normal uh, than what the, how normal moves. Yeah, mm-hmm. words. But anyways. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not cutting all these flubs out, Kevin. These two flubs this episode. <laughs> yeah, this is a flubby episode. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then like also, I, I I talked about it a little bit more in the first half, but now but like now I wanted to go into detail, like how the this film still like still means something to the creators, and it wasn't like the creators didn't still didn't talk about it until very recently, like a couple of years ago, where this mm-hmm. the the Matrix is actually a trans allegory. Um, okay. if, yeah, in case you don't know, the Wachowskis, uh, are trans, are trans women, uh, back in the time of making this in 1999, they were, they publicly identified as male, but they are now female. Um, so basically the idea of, of it being trans allegory is that, you know, you are when, as a trans person, you are being told that you are one gender when you in real life are another, basically like people are forcing a reality on you that doesn't feel that doesn't, that isn't true. Um, and then like, and once you've basically, basically it's about being yourself and then overcoming the reality that other people force you to believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, which is the matrix essentially where it's, like, yeah. he's stuck, he's stuck in the matrix. The, the, the programs want to believe in this reality when, you know, the real world is much more different. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, we, we kind of see also in season two of infinity train with mirror tulip. Uh, that's also a trans allegory where Mirror Tulip is being told that she's a null. She's she's not an actual person. She's just someone, something that the train created for to for passengers. But then eventually, like she gets out of the train and into the real world by by basically like committing to her being an actual person. Yeah. Um. So it was, so so like that's the only time I've seen this like mo- like with um book uh sorry season two of infinity train was like i see like the the trans allegory of matrix being used again in more modern times um 
And it's pretty much pretty similar too. Uh, but yeah, then like, you know, then we have uh, the, the people take the, the concept of the matrix and adapt it in another way. Like ready player one, it's just like the story of like, Oh, like, you know, it's just like, Oh, video games aren't real life. You got to go outside once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> It's so bad, dude. No. <laughs> Screw that. Ready Player One is very sexist as well. It's oh, pretty no. awful. Yeah. Well, well okay. Here's, here's a question again. I did have, though. Um, so what is it like watching this film after seeing other films repeat, kind of like repeat, uh, walk the same steps, tread the same line? I don't know. Uh, where, like, you know, like if you've, mm-hmm. if you've seen the new Jumanji movies or Ready Player One, and Tron Legacy, like, how does it feel going back to mat- the Matrix, which kind of like is the start of those concepts? I mean, for me, like I always kind of knew that the Matrix was the one that f- did this concept first. So it's going back to like mm-hmm. the original, for example. Right. So like it's the original, right? So in terms like in pop culture terms, right? Star Wars, mm-hmm. like every time you go back and watch like the original Star Wars, like A New Hope, like it always mm-hmm. feels like it was the first one to do it. So like you can accept the matrix for all its flaws because it was the first one to achieve this goal of this high concept, uh, and a mm-hmm. different kind of like theme and different kind of space and different kind of like world building. So you forgive a lot of like, you could like nitpick and pull, pull holes in the matrix all you really wanted to. But mm-hmm. besides that, like it's a, it's a sturdy boat and there's not a lot of water is going to fill in the bottom of that boat. If you know what I mean? Like, right. There's really not anything to poke holes into. And like, there's a underlying theme, like a lot of underlying themes in this film. You can like a lot of them and you can find them wherever you look. If you want to like the trans allegory is a very powerful one, very beautiful one. There's also Mm -hmm. ones like that, like as we progress farther with social media and TikTok, like and high algorithms, um, that's even more of a, um, social commentary on like the matrix, like the matrix, like basically like predicted it. If you think about Mm -hmm. it, like the farther we go with social media and, being in the VR space and like in an electronic internet space, like that is what the matrix is like foreshadowing right. and like foretelling. For a, for a lot of people, the social media is the window to the outside world. Right. Like exactly. That, is, that becomes yeah. their reality. Right. Exactly. And so like with that, like you can find that theme in the matrix as well. And so mm-hmm. like for it to all have started like back in like 1999, like at the height of Y2K, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just very compelling and you can, if there are, if you do see a flaw in it, you can forgive it a lot easier than like Spy Kids 3 and like Jumanji <laughs> and Ready Player One because like they should have learned and grew from that and progressed the Matrix's ideas forward when they didn't. They kind of like, I mean, I haven't seen really, I only want to really seen Spy Kids 3. I haven't seen Ready Player One or Jumanji, mm-hmm. the new Jumanji movies. Well, Spy Kids 3, but, it's, it's, it's a Spy Kids movie. Right, it's, it's a Spy it's Kids movie. Fan, and it's Kevin, really fun. They're based very, off Kevin's, they're, sorry, based off Kevin's thoughts on Ready Player <laughs> One. And I know Jordan liked the John Jumanji movies, but like none of them really have progressed the Matrix idea forward in any way to make it like right. built off of it and make it better than where it left it. So I mean, so you gotta still give the win point to the Matrix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think any of those movies are trying to progress it anyway. I think they're right. They're trying to capitalize it. off. Oh of no, it. they're Not trying yet. to capitalize. It's just an action movie with some entertainment and some jokes, and Kevin Hart's in here and he's short. <laughs> right. <laughs> Look, man, those Jumanji movies are kind of fun though. Oh yeah, they're, they're fun. fun. Yeah. I'll give them that. They're fun, but uh-huh. it's still just every time I watch them, I'm like, this is just chaos. Like, oh yeah, there was definitely not no need for a second one. <laughs> There's gonna be a third one. Oh, oh yeah. Why? Come on, the Why second one had a huge people? cliffhanger at the end. Uh, anyway, Robin Williams, <laughs> come on. Rob Williams had the right idea to throw that thing right back into the ocean. <laughs> uh, Anywho, why not just Ryan, burn it? But uh. Yeah, one other thing I have with this uh, movie I forgot to mention is that the only thing I ever dislike in it is that green and blue color palettes. Right, oh my God. throws me uh, off. I huh? love the color palette so much. I, I, I love like, the look of this use of color palettes. Like green is is inside a program and blue is the real world. So I know. it's just a nice I, way to kind of like visualize it. I they, know it's supposed to differentiate, but res- it was just like, man, yeah. I'm tired of this green color. They get rid of it in Resurrections. Which I thought was oh, cool. an interesting choice. Well, because cool. here it's like so it's like Matrix one, two, and three. They're like you know they're the same. They're very similar in aesthetic. It's just like the story kind of goes all over the place. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then the resurrection is like revisiting it many years later. And it's like, it makes a really interesting choices, uh, which maybe we'll talk about one day. I know it, it's a very divisive film. I am, <laughs> I am asking for trouble by saying I really love Matrix Resurrections, but Hey, yes, you know, yes, you are. It, 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 it gives me a very, it gives me a very Blade Runner versus Blade Runner 2049 vibe. It gives yeah, me fair the Last Jedi discourse PTSD <laughs> on Twitter vibe. <laughs> Except like Matrix isn't as big as Star Wars, so you kind of exactly, like yeah. it, it was gone over as soon as it started, essentially. Right. Uh, let's do some quick final thoughts and wrap up the episode. Sound good, guys? Yeah. Uh, Matrix is still my all-time favorite movie. It's smart, theologically and philosophically driven story, uh, with an insane amount of symbolism, high concept action, and still rep- that's that is still replicated today. And of course. It has Keanu Reeves. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ryan? Yeah, uh, it's not my all-time favorite. I'm sorry, Kevin. Um, no. It's honestly, I, I do like the symbolism and everything behind it, but most of the time I'm just watching it as an action movie with my dad because we both enjoy action mm-hmm. movies. And whenever it's on, we're like, oh, hey, let's watch this. And my dad always loves Lawrence Fishburne. And I love Keanu because Keanu is king. Mm-hmm. Uh, but honestly, like I enjoy the movie. Honestly, a simulation kind of sounds good right now because maybe simulation <laughs> would would be a little COVID. simmy, a little simmy as it's a like, treat. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a virus in the program. That's all COVID is. It's a virus in the program. <laughs> oh my god! Right, it's not your favorite movie, but everyone needs to have the same favorite movie as me. <laughs> Boy, no. we got some bad. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so as I said earlier, um, the payoffs for each idea and themes are done remarkably well, even up to like the white rabbit being shown and seconds later. Like it oh, or it's shown seconds later. After it's yeah, exactly. Um, I think, like I said, my social media topic earlier and like the internet, um, there's a line that Agent Smith says where something along the lines of like the Matrix was made in the image of your civilization at its peak, mm-hmm. not when you all became dependent on us and it became our civilization. Like when the on like the start of the internet and when programs started taking over the Matrix, and that still rings true to make the Matrix almost like will be a time a timeless concept in film. Mm-hmm. Um, highly recommend everyone needs to watch it at least once just to understand like hey you were warned basically <laughs> like you were warned and like it wasn't even like the matrix warned you because that's it's because like mm-hmm. it goes all the way back to Plato's allegory of the cave mm-hmm. where if you people are born into a cave and only in like in the with shadow puppetry on the wall they're gonna they're gonna think that is reality uh, right. until they leave the cave and realize there's a whole actual world out there so the Matrix is essentially like a super like sci-fi version of Plato's allegory of the cave. But then mm-hmm. it's like, but also but like you said, Zach, it shows how timeless it is because like that that allegory is like thousands of years old. Mm-hmm. Um I don't even know when Plato was alive, but it's in the BC area, that's for sure. A while. Yeah. But yeah, this has been our episode on the Matrix. If you want to hear the rest of our thoughts on other topics, tune into our full episode over on Patreon. You can follow us on Twitter at Committed Crits, that's C-O-M-M-I-T-D-E-D-C-R-I-T-S, YouTube at Committed Critics, spelled the same there it is here everywhere else, and TikTok, also at Committed Critics, but it's one word. Special thanks to our current patrons, David Peppers from Game Mechanics, Ryan Kowalkowski from Ryan Plays Drums, Andy Phillips from Andy Phillips, Jody Wright, and Devin Vonderheide, and we will see you in two weeks. Bye.